What's going on guys, this is Rob. Uh, if you guys enjoy my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell so you never miss out on my sexy voice. Okay, so getting into Aquaman, DC Rebirth is kind of in an interesting situation right now, because if I'm being honest with you guys, as much as I love what DC Rebirth has done, I'm kind of ready for like, a fresh influx of new titles like Shazam or JSA or or something because right now it seems like for the last two or three years we've just been getting like stories with the same titles all the time and I'm kind of getting tired of reading about Aquaman all the time <laughs> so I love what DC's done and I don't mean to tear them down at all it's just I think it's ready for uh you know I, I think we're ready for some new blood and and it's I think it's been long enough but the fact remains here uh when it when it comes to this whole Aquaman thing really this story begins kind of the the next era of Aquaman and it seems like it's necessary for his character, really what's, what's kind of happened so far is it's largely been the traditional fare of Aquaman himself, which is to say, trying to find a balance between being the king of Atlantis and being a superhero on the surface world, which as most people who are reading Aquaman will tell you, that's the core part of his character. It's the nature of what he of what he does and what he believes. He is a guy that tries to find a middle ground between the, you know, between Atlantis, his role as king, and trying to be a superhero on the surface. Now, if ha if being asked to make a choice, if he's, if he's basically told, you know, do you choose Atlantis or do you choose the surface? world, Aquaman would by and large choose Atlantis, especially in the middle of a crisis. But what this does is it answers the question in more of a in more of a unique way. And so, of course, with Aquaman and Mera basically returning back to Atlantis proper, once they reach the throne room, everybody's gone. And that's not normally what happens. The reason for this is because with Aquaman being gone, a regent's basically placed in his stead, which is to say somebody who, who essentially sits on the throne and governs in his place. You know, they are basically the voice of the king while the king's not there. But when he gets here and everyone's gone, it really really begins to ask a few questions. The question they begin to ask is, where's everyone at? Now, of course, this is met almost immediately with the arrival of Korm Rath. And the reason why this is a big deal is because Korm Rath, remember, is the leader of the Deluge. The Deluge, of course, basically being the rebel faction within Atlantis that's been trying to find a way to topple, uh, you know, Arthur Curry as king. There's not much doing here. It's your standard fare between, like, the Deluge and, and Aquaman and Mira, and that's all that, that, that's really all it is. But with the arrival, or really with the, the end of this conflict, comes, like, the actual members of Atlantis, essentially like the Council of, of Elders. And when they arrive here, what they basically say is Coram Wrath is here because they brought him here. And he's been brought here, he's basically been released from prison because what they're doing is they're basically saying it's time for Aquaman to go. And it's very interesting because what's essentially happened is the kingdom of Aquaman has turned against Aquaman. Now really the the kind of big push that led to this came in the, the last couple stories, uh, Warhead and, and H2O, but those aren't really essential stories. This itself is a long time coming. It didn't come out of nowhere. It wasn't like suddenly they turned against Aquaman. They've really just kind of been raising an eyebrow consistently. And those are the points that are being made here. People basically say, look, like as Aquaman, your, your, your role is to be a king of Atlantis, but you're not. You're a king who's almost never here. You're a king who's almost always fighting alongside the Justice League on the surface. You're a king that makes yourself look like one of the metahumans from the surface. It's almost as if you wish you could be one of them, as opposed to being the king of Atlantis. And if you're not really loyal to Atlantis, then we'll just remove you. And so at the end of the day, when you start having Aquaman asking the question, and even when Mera starts asking questions, you know, is this really going to stand? You guys cannot depose him. He's the king. Even his most, you know, even Merc, like one of his most loyal servants says, I serve the throne. Whoever happens to be on the throne is who I serve, but I do not serve loyalty. I, I, I did not swear fealty to Aquaman. I swore that to the throne. And so it's one of these things where you begin to sort of look around at the kingdom of Atlantis and realize it really was all just sitting on eggshells. It really was Aquaman with no absolute guarantee he was going to be king forever. And I feel like this is a great change of pace. I feel like it's a great direction to take his stories in because we always kind of knew that about Aquaman. It was always kind of a thought sitting in the back of your head, but it was something that you never really considered. But with Aquaman kind of being deposed and being pushed out, things really, really begin to get hairy here because in response to this, what the council basically does is they say, we're removing Aquaman and we're replacing him with Korm Wrath because Korm Wrath represents our ideologies. He, rep he understands what it means to truly be a king of Atlantis. Now, in this instance, Aquaman really kind of responds by saying, well, you're plunging us into the Dark Ages. You're setting us back a massive amount of time. And where you would expect Mira to be in his corner and to say, Aquaman is 100% right. I am loyal to my husband. While she is, she actually takes the opportunity to say, maybe this is our chance to leave. Maybe it's our chance to vacate Atlantis to take off and do our own thing. And this is huge because Mira has usually always been in the corner of Aquaman. Again, there have been times where they've had a rift. And in fact, there was a time, I believe, when they were divorced or they were separated from one another. And, and while I wouldn't 
wouldn't go as far as to say they were enemies. There wasn't a whole lot of love lost there. But with regards to, to this instance right now, she's really just kind of saying, let's run away. Let's leave. Let's walk away. But for Aquaman, it's not that simple. And that's why I say when it comes to him versus the Deluge, you really starting to get into some, into some gray areas here. The Deluge are loyal to Atlantis. Aquaman is loyal to Atlantis. What differs here are their fundamental views on what direction Atlantis should take. The Deluge want to take things back to the way they used to be. We are 100% completely and totally isolationist unless there's maybe some kind of a threat that would endanger the Earth. And if that threat's not going to endanger Atlantis directly, then we don't care what happens to the heroes in the surface world. Whereas Aquaman coming into this says, but we face a litany of threats. There's been multiple times when the, when the Earth has been threatened and like that would endanger Atlantis. But it's one of these things where it's like the response of, of, of really, the, you know, the, the council and the deluges, but we don't care. If it does not directly threaten Atlantis, we don't want to have anything to do with it. Let the surface world be the surface world. If it means all the heroes on the surface die, then it means they all die. That's their problem, not our problem. But it's kind of interesting because it's one of these things Aquaman kind of looks to this, you know, and, and to paraphrase the old saying here, when they came for this group, I was silent. When they came for that group, I was silent. When they came for that group, I was silent. When they came for me, there was no one to speak up. And so that's kind of the stance that Aquaman takes here. But again, Mira basically leaves. She says, look, okay, fine. I will be at the lighthouse if you need me, but I think the best course of action for us is to walk away. I think the best course of action for us is to leave. And so where you end up having Korm Wrath, who's basically, you know, on the precipice of being appointed as the new king, you've also got Tula, who is, uh, well, really kind of like the region of sorts in Aquaman's stead, who, who also vacates. I mean, she was essentially taken prisoner, you know, and of course she escapes her bonds and takes off to the surface. And so it's really a very small, kind of a bare bones crew of people who are allying themselves with Aquaman, or at least who can ally themselves with Aquaman. And so in this moment, you end up having, you know, Korm Wrath, who basically says, there's all these forms of magic down here. There's all these various weapons and tools and things like that that we could use. Why hasn't Aquaman used them before? And where the initial response is because he was weak, because he was incapable, the reality of this is because he chose not to. Because if Atlantis, you know, if, if the various governments of the world, you know, for example, you know, the, the US government was monitoring Atlantis and saw them, per, you know, basically performing a series of acts that looked like formations of war, they would treat it as war and they would become defensive. This in turn would put the Atlanteans on defense and would ultimately culminate in a war between the surface and the Atlanteans. And so it was one of these things where people kind of look at Aquaman and they say, what you would consider to be a uh, an act of non-aggression, what you would consider to be something that basically says, look guys, we're not here to fight you. We as the Deluge see that as placating, weakness. We see that as you basically, you know, kowtowing to the surface world, doing everything you can, ingratiating yourself before them, saying, hey, look, we're not a, we're not a threat. You know, it's basically rolling over and showing your belly. And so again, it's, it's totally different ideologies. Each one has merit, but they're so intriguing here because basically when the Council of Elders begins to rule here and when they sit down and they look at Aquaman and they say, we are here to, to basically judge your verdict. Where do you stand on this? And he con continues to stand firm and say, I refuse to believe that no truce can be found between us and the service world. I refuse to believe that the bridge cannot be created here. Then he's still considered to be someone who does not have the interest of Atlantis front and forward. And so ultimately he's ousted. They basically say, you are no longer king here. You are out. And again, this is huge. A man can only be a ruler of two kingdoms before one of them turns on him. Before one of them, you know, before the, the, the question is asked, which one of these do you choose? And that's why I say it answers it in a more indirect route because Aquaman's response is, of course I choose Atlantis, but just because you've been living things a certain way for so long doesn't mean that you have to live that way till the end of time. And it makes sense. Just because you believe something's true doesn't mean it is true. It just means you believe it to be true. If you don't have facts to back it up, then it's just an opinion and opinions aren't really relevant. And so it's, it's, it's interesting in the situation because he's kind of booted. And so of course, Korm Wrath basically takes up the throne and in turn, Aquaman goes to leave because the truth is that if he were to stay, then he would be taken prisoner. But what this does is it allows him to basically leave Atlantis proper, or at least try to leave Atlantis proper and then figure out what to do next. But of course, Korm Wrath essentially just starts constructing this massive uh, barrier of sorts around Atlantis and Aquaman is caught in the conflict, you know, caught sort of, you know, intertwined in this whole thing because where Mera sees this massive amount of light, you know, emerge from the ocean, it's just kind of like, what in the hell's going on? And immediately takes over, you know, takes off to go see Aquaman or at least to try to figure out, you know, understand what's happening. Ultimately, the, the shell basically converges on the city itself. Aquaman's caught and he's killed. Basically, it, it, you know, he's essentially killed by Merc. And that's what's so crazy about this is because the, in order for the new king to be crowned, the existing king must fall. It has to be the end of him. Now, ideally, they would basically take him and they would make him a prisoner. But with Aquaman trying to engineer his escape, everyone watching this essentially knows that what would happen here, or at least it seems like they know that what would happen here is Aquaman would go out and marshal forces. He would find various individuals around uh, Atlantis that are not necessarily enshrined inside this, this uh, covering over the capital city. And he would find those who were still loyal to him. And what this could potentially do is plunge Atlantis into a civil war. And so with him 
basically being killed, it seems to be the end of Aquaman. Like it's literally the end of him entirely. And so what this does is hopefully it goes forward giving us an answer. <laughs> hopefully it goes forward and tells us what happens next. But it's a cool thing. You know, it's kind of a cool thing to see like the story taking this direction because in reality, Aquaman always kind of seemed to be mundane to me. But I'm looking at this and I'm just like, holy shit, Aquaman's badass. So like, let me know what you guys think. But with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comments Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace.